All right, guys, let's talk about velocity. Over here, we're going to start off by talking about position. Position is often measured in meters per second, if you're doing physics or whatever. You can also measure it in feet per second or miles per hour or, or any distance over any time unit. But today, we're going to look at, at it in meters per second. And we can look at this graph, and we realize that after one second, you've gone two meters. After two seconds, you've gone four meters. And after three seconds, you've gone six meters. So we can figure out that the, that the velocity is two meters per second. And you can look at that, you can realize that the slope of this is two, you can figure out some other way. But for now, let's look at the slope as being two, and that's also the velocity. So if we take a graph of position, and we look at the slope of that graph, that's gonna be the velocity. Now here's where things get tricky, is sometimes, well over here the velocity is nice and constant, it's always two meters per second. But a lot of times the velocity is constantly changing. You know, if you drive a car, you'll notice the velocity is not always the exact same thing. If you look at the speedometer, the, the speed is constantly changing, right? A little bit. And so what hap what do we, how do we deal with a situation like that where, where you have something like this? Let's say this parabola was the graph of the velocity. In other words, the velocity is constantly, constantly changing. It's not the same. Uh, sorry, this is the graph of position. And so the slope is... All right, let's talk about velocity. Velocity is measured in meters per second. It can also be measured in miles per hour or feet per second. But today we're going to measure it in meters per second. And those of you guys who are doing physics will often be using meters per second. If we look at this graph, we can see that whatever this is describing, after one second, it's gone two meters. After two seconds, it's gone four meters. After three seconds, it's gone six meters, etc. And so we can figure out that this that the velocity is two meters per second. We also notice that the slope is two. And that is not very surprising because the slope of the position graph is going to be the velocity. The velocity is the slope of position. And we can verify that over here by you know thinking about it, realizing that if in one second you go two meters, the slope is obviously two meters in one second or two meters per second. Now, this is a nice steady situation, constant velocity, and every second you go exactly two more meters. But if you've ever been in a, in a car, you know that's not really how things always are. Sometimes the, velo the velocity is constantly changing. So what do we do in a situation like that? Let's take a look at this. So over here, let's say this, this uh, parabola is, a, is the position graph, and we can see that the velocity, which is the slope of the position graph, is always changing. Over here, the, the, the slope of the position graph is negative. Right here at the bottom, it's zero. Over here, it's something, so how do we, what do we use to find the velocity at any instant? To find the instantaneous velocity, that means the velocity at a very specific moment, we need to find the slope at that moment. So for example, at this point, we're trying to find this slope, the slope of this green line would be the slope at this exact moment. So what tells you the slope of the tangent line? Well, the derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line. And so velocity ends up being the derivative of the position function. Uh, or if, you, if you're doing physics, you'll say velocity is the derivative of the displacement function. It's, either one of those is true. So in order to find instantaneous velocity, you need to find the slope of the tangent line, which is also the derivative. 